Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is our partner webinar. MyPV from Austria and Sunem from the United Kingdom. We present our combined solution, which is a thermal battery from Sunem and a power controller from MyPV. And together, these uh, components offer a PV ready solution. This is what we are going to tell you today. Um, thank you very much for participating. And uh, it's about um, yeah, heat generation from solar power, but um, electric solar power, not thermal solar power. This is the difference in our century. We are not doing it with pipes any longer. We are using wires instead of pipes. All right. Um, my name is uh, Reinhard Hofstetter. I'm uh, at uh, MyPV. I'm an employer at MyPV for eight years already. And um, together with me in the webinar room today is my colleague Talal. And during my presentation, Talal is available for questions um, that come from you guys uh, in the chat anytime. And of course, we are going to provide the slides that we are presenting today after the session. So we are going to send the presentation to you via email and you can go um, through some details if you like also later on. Um, a woman that also needs to be introduced is Alice. Uh, she's a sales director at MyPV. And to all of you who are uh, interested in a, a business uh, cooperation, uh, this is the contact for you. Um, either Talal or Alice will be available for you. My part today is uh, the technical part. And uh, I would like to start with a short introduction from MyPV. We are a manufacturer of power electronics. Um, we are located in Austria and we, um, sorry, and we are developing and producing the solution that I'm going to show to you today. What uh, is uh, this uh, doing? Uh, what are we doing? So our product is something like hmm, a gearbox. You know, a gearbox, it's um, a connector between components. And our gearbox is an electronic power stage. It combines the PV side on one end with a thermal um, load with a thermal uh, generator on the other side. And uh, in doing so, this thermal um, heat source is no longer just switched on and off. It's now linearly power controlled. And this is what we're doing with our gearbox. Let's call it that way. We are the power stage which adjusts the thermal power output on the heat side. This is what we're doing. And the heat side today in the webinar is a thermal battery from Sunamp. Um, usually this uh, heat, th heat side is um, an ohmic load, a resistive load, an immersion heater, an infrared panel, or an electric heating mat. Does not matter to, uh, to my PV. And um, of course, the, the heater in the, in the thermal battery from Sunamp is also a resistive load. And um, of course, it's possible to combine our solutions because from our point of view, this is just um, a resistive heat load as, uh, as every other load. Okay, and um, our history as a company is uh, quite young. Um, here are the basic milestones. Uh, there is a DC solution, which is a, a solar electric immersion heater. And uh, over the years, uh, there are also AC solutions um, that we um, released on the market for on-grid systems. And one of these AC solutions named Actor is uh, the solution that we need to focus on today because the Actor is the gearbox that makes a solar battery, a thermal battery from, from Sunamp PV ready. Uh, how are we doing this? Because we are adjusting the thermal power output linearly. Okay, it's about the actor today. So we are talking about on-grid systems and we are using the energy for heating, which usually goes back to the power grid. So we are on the grid and we measure the excessive power in the feed-in point. All right, it's about actor today. This is one of our latest milestones. It's our company headquarter here in Upper Austria. And... Uh, this uh, was uh, the new building which we built in 2021. Um, the latest milestone in our history from the last slide is the expansion of our storage, uh, uh, sorry, uh, of our production area, of our production 
uh, capacity, which means that we use all the area in the hall here in the background as well for manufacturing uh, nowadays as well. All right, and uh, this was my short introduction and uh, the info about my PV. And now it's about my co-moderator, Robert. Uh, he's connected to us uh, from Switzerland and he's employee of uh, Sunem. And uh, Robert, um, thank you for uh, yeah, doing this uh, joint webinar with us today. Um, please, stage is yours. Introduce yourself and introduce uh, Sunem, please. Well, first of all, thank you also for offering us the platform to to present uh, our cooperation, our actually pretty young cooperation, I would say. Um, my name is Robert Gandia. Thank you also for being here. I'm a business development manager at Sanamp, now working for uh, over two years and taking care of uh, global partnerships around the globe. And uh, I'm happy also to be here and to present you a little bit Sanamp. Sanab is a company based uh, in Scotland with uh, several uh, with uh, several offices around the world in New York, Shenzhen, and in Zurich included. We are about 85 employees nowadays. Uh, we have uh, manufactured, sold, and uh, installed 25,000 units around the world. Uh, we are tackling a global market of around 43 million hot water tanks, which is our main products, Thermino, it's the product um, I will, I am bringing uh, for you today. Um, we are uh, around, we're tackling the, the whole globe with currently a factory only in Scotland of about the uh, maximum uh, heat battery production of 20,000 uh, units. We can scale it up, up to 50,000 and are looking into larger factories into actually a network of factories um, aiming for 500,000 uh, units production capacity. Um, what brings Sunamp, what's the raison d'être uh, of Sunamp is actually our technology, our core technology, which is PCM. Um, we are world leading um, worldwide in, in that field, um, mostly bringing compactness, reliability, safeness and efficiency to our customers with uh, over 10,000 cycles. PCM needs some cycle stability to be actually competitive in the market. And this is the most, the maximum value that we are bringing to our customers. With that, I guess back to you, Reinhardt. Thank you. You are muted. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the hint. Uh, yeah, it's already a good uh, team play now. Um, yeah, thank you for your introduction. We are going to uh, see more details after my next part. Um, and uh, yeah, this is uh, the gearbox I was talking about. Actually, uh, it's a power stage. Um, what are we doing uh, with uh, this power stage? What we are doing is uh, called uh, power to heat, actually. Um, so we are using excessive renewable energy in the household from the roof uh, and uh, use this excessive energy for heating appliances. So the standard application from IPV is, um, is an immersion heater somewhere in a boiler or in a tank, which uh, we are supplying with uh, power linearly. But it's also about electric space heating. Um, today is somehow different because it does not make any difference from IPV whether you connect an immersion heater or an infrared panel. You can also connect a Sunamp heat battery to our um, device. So um, PV can deliver much more than just electricity. Of course, it uh, supplies the uh, electric appliances in the in the building, the light, the devices, whatever. It can also supply your your EV uh, if you have one, and it also can be used for power to heat as we do with my PV solutions for heat appliances. All right. Um, when people think about electric heating, uh, usually they think about a principle like this. They think we are using electric energy from the public grid one by one and they questioning themselves uh, what is the innovative part here this is standard it's known for decades and this is actually not what we are doing uh, what we are doing is the principle here at the bottom we are using um, 
environmental energy or energy from the environment. It's, it's natural energy and basically it's uh, electric power, solar electric power. This is what we are using. And um, yeah, this is how um, an electric heater can become a green solution. Um, because depending where you're living and which country, um, you have an energy mix in the power grid. Uh, yeah, and, and it can be whether green or not green, depending on the location. But one thing is uh, sure, the energy that we are using is definitely green because it comes from the power plant on your roof. What is always an option, it's never a must have for my PV solution, is that you use power from the grid for backup. Um, backup is necessary, for example, when you have um, some days with bad weather conditions and of course during winter time, and this is always an option. It's, it's just very easy to activate this option, but the factory preset uh, on the actor is that it's uh, deactivated. So our actor is just using excessive energy from the uh, PV system. Uh, it's about storage capacities. I'm pretty sure uh, Robert is uh, going to show uh, his storage capacities. I just have the numbers here for batteries and uh, water-based uh, thermal storages. Um, when we took uh, a look on um, stationary battery systems in a household, uh, we see a storage capacity of around about 5 to 10 kilowatt hours. And this is quite a small storage capacity, I would say, um, compared to the capacity that we see in thermal storages. Um, so a standard alternative here is using a hot water boiler. For example, when you heat up the volume of a 300 liter boiler uh, by 45 degrees centigrade, you um, accumulate 15 kilowatt hours of energy there. And this can be a cheap alternative to stationary battery systems. Um, my PV does not compete with stationary battery systems. Uh, we can be um, a cheap add-on uh, to stationary batteries as well, because there's quite a huge number of compatible battery manufacturers uh, and you can bring both um, yeah, storage variants together. And as you are going to learn today, there's also one more option because beside water-based uh, tanks and uh, boilers, there's also the, the possibility to use a PCM material, so a phase-changing material to accumulate heat and uh, this is going uh, to be shown in um, Robert's part. Why does it make sense not to feed your excess energy into the power grid? There is a number of reasons for this. Um, one is an, an economic reason. And uh, this is the, uh, the case when you earn less money for feeding into the power grid, then you have to spend on the other side for your conventional heat source, let's say natural gas, for example, when you, you pay more for the kilowatt hour uh, in gas than you earn for feeding into the power grid, then it's immediately wise not to feed in, keep the energy in the building for a power to heat application and you save um, directly, you directly save um, on, your, on your gas bill, for example. But this also applies for for any other conventional heating system does not matter for for heat pumps for biomass boilers for district heating systems you are replacing the energy demand on this side then so this was an economic reason uh, then there's um, a social reason it's about energy independence so for my view there was always the the customer group um, who said uh, it's very important to me to be independent to be autarkic um, and since the war in Ukraine, there's, um, the share of this customer group has become bigger and bigger, of course, because nowadays we all uh, have in mind where our natural gas comes from. I'm talking about the European situation right now. And then there is a technical reason as well. It's about grid stability. So we are in the transition to renewable energies. We are changing our uh, power um, system completely. Uh, and this is... Um, this is a challenge of my generation and it's a challenge of the generations uh, from my uh, kids. And when we are covering all the roofs with PV panels in the future, it's definitely not possible anymore that we feed in all the energy into the power grid. So we make we need to make 
um, local use out of it by using every storage capacity we have. Can be a stationary battery, can be the battery on four wheels in your garage, it can be the boiler, it can be the storage tank, or it can be a thermal battery with phase changing material. We need to use all these kind of storages together uh, to ensure that the PV system is used as long as possible during the day and that the shutdown uh, is avoided um, as long as possible. All right. Um, what my PV solutions are um, important for the combination with SUNAMP? It's not the DC immersion heater ELVA, it's not the AC immersion heater AC ELVA 2, but it's uh, the power stage actor or actor 9S. And uh, this power stage can be used as the gearbox uh, that I was talking about, uh, which makes the SUNAMP battery then PV ready. Uh, in in doing so, we control the power on the sun and battery linearly, and it's no longer just switched on and off. This is a big deal here, linear power control. And the um, yeah, priority of uh, the uh, application of excessive power is shown here. So you have PV generation on the roof. You directly use it, first of all, for your household appliances. If there is a battery, the priority is on charging uh, on the battery next and uh, if there is no battery it works as well and later on before we feed it into the power grid we use it for power to heat applications and um, why is there a priority on the uh, stationary electric battery uh, that's easy to explain uh, that's our normal recommendation because once uh, it is heat created by my PV, we cannot get back electricity out of the storage. Um, and uh, economically and physically um, seen, um, electric energy has a higher value than thermal energy. That, that's why we usually recommend priority should be on the charging of the stationary electric battery. Um, but this um, storage capacities are somehow quite limited here. So there's um, a lot of um, interesting applications in, in heat appliances as well. I told you it's about using excessive energy, energy that would be fed into the power grid. And we need to measure this, uh, how much excessive energy is available. And we are not going to measure this on the inverter side. It does not matter how much the inverter is generating. We measure this in the feed-in point uh, next to the utility meter of your energy supplier. This is where we measure the relevant uh, value for our work. And uh, one way to detect this excessive energy in the feed-in point is an accessory part named MyPV Wi-Fi meter. And this is not a must-have because there's quite a number of alternatives uh, we are compatible to um, a huge number of smart home manufacturers, PV inverter manufacturers, also hybrid PV inverter manufacturers and battery manufacturers. And once one of them is already measuring the excessive power in the feed-in point, there's quite a good chance that we can make use of his measurement um, yeah, value. And uh, we use this information for our power control. And then it's not necessary to install a Wi-Fi meter as well. Just in case for, for retrofitting systems, for example, that there is no compatible signal source, we can use the Wi-Fi meter for sure for this job. Um, yeah, there's also an, an online calculator to, um, yeah, to check out the improvement, the potential of improvement in domestic systems. Um, one detail is important to mention. Um, this uh, takes um, water-based thermal storage into account. Uh, the PCM principle from SUNAMP is not yet integrated into this online calculator. But uh, nevertheless, I want to rec it, recommend it to you because it gives you a quite easy understanding of the uh, potential that we can find in power to heat in residential buildings. So the self-utilization ratio, the independence ratio, and the annual costs of your building, they can immediately be calculated. And it's it's really quite fun to use this tool. Um, 
it's free for everybody. So um, just use it for your own uh, PV system in the first step and get a feeling of uh, the potential of power to heat applications from my PV. All right, now it's about the product, the power stage or the gearbox, as I called it many times, it's the actor. And the actor comes in two variants. There is a single phase variant, uh, which is um, able to do the power adjustment on the sun and battery linearly from zero to 3000 watts. And it also comes with an uh, adapter of this European main socket for the international market. And uh, then there's a variant of Actor named Actor 9S, which is now a three-phase variant, um, capable to adjust the power output linearly from zero to 9,000 watts. Uh, why is this also interesting for Sunamp? Um, you can use uh, one of these output only, outputs only for, um, for um, connecting it to the Sunamp battery. And you can use uh, the other two outputs for other uh, appliances, if you like. Yeah, the actor comes with uh, seven operation modes. Just one is really relevant in the beginning. Uh, it's mode one, the hot water mode. Um, this is the mode you choose when you do the uh, installation with the sun and battery. Um, because for our actor, it does not matter whether it's an immersion heater connected uh, to the bottom or a sun and battery. So it's mode one we are talking about. And there is quite a number of uh, communications op communication options as well to receive the excessive power information from the feed-in point. Of course, it's, uh, as I already shown, uh, possible to receive this uh, information via the YPV, MyPV Wi-Fi meter. Um, the Wi-Fi meter is then connected to the actor via the local area network. And uh, the same applies for free programmable controls like Modbus TCP or HTTP. Um, the communication always happens over your local area net network, which means there is a router in between the signal source and the actor. All right. Um, and, um, another option uh, beside uh, Ethernet, beside local area network communication is um, the option to use RS485. This applies for uh, a few signal sources, especially uh, PV inverters, uh, where we are not connected via LAN, uh, via Ethernet, but via RS485. So it's a two wire or actually a three wire communication uh, interface. And um, yeah, there are two other um, options as well, but they are not that important today. Okay, uh, here is a detail uh, how you connect the Sunamp uh, thermal battery to the actor. You see this European main socket. It's also shown uh, under this picture in this um, yeah, a sketch here. Uh, and uh, here you see how Sunamp recommends to connect the mains on the supply side and how you need to connect the sun and battery on the load side. And there is an important hint here. Make sure that there is no wire bridge between L1 and L2 or between N1 and N2. Uh, this is very important because, um, Robert, as far as I know, there are some um, devices from your uh, production which have uh, bridges in here. So um, Please consider this important hint here uh, when you do the installation. Otherwise, the the mains side from the from the grid would be connected to the load side of Actor, and this is definitely um, yeah a problem uh, when you do the installation that way. So remove the bridges. That's the important message here. All right, technical details, uh, linear power control. Uh, this is the important detail for zero to 3000 watt power output. You also have hyperlinks in here. So uh, once you get the slides after the webinar from Talal, uh, you can use uh, these links as well for more detailed information. Very important for retrofitting when you install the Ecto 9S on an existing three phase load. So not the sun and battery in that case, but uh, let's assume you install it on an immersion heater. Uh, you need to know one detail as well. The Actro 9S is always connected in a star connection, which, which means you need a neutral on the load. Uh, it does not work in the delta connection. Uh, when you use the Actro 9S, 
uh, or one of the three outputs from, from Ecto 9S with the Sun in battery, you connect um, L1 and the neutral here, for example, from output one, and you have the linear power control uh, here um, just by the connection of these two wires here. All right, um, technical details. Um, yeah, all the benefits at a glance. Um, we think um, using wires instead of pipes for creating heat out of solar energy uh, makes the installation many times easier. Uh, my personal background was the solar thermal side. So in my earlier job, I developed collector systems, flat plate collector systems to be detailed uh, with pumps and expansion vessels and pipes and anti-freezing liquid and all that stuff to get solar energy into the boiler or into the thermal storage. And using wires now and PV installations, the whole principle gets many times easier. Uh, it's usually maintenance free compared to uh, traditional solar thermal systems as well. All right, um, yeah, where you find this detailed information, how you um, do the wiring between an actor and the sun and battery, of course, this uh, uh, quick start guide is um, prepared and already for download for you guys for the first installations. And you also find it directly via this link here on the, on the slide. Um, and we are going to send you the PDF uh, just after the webinar. All right, uh, Robert, enough from my side. Um, it's Now it's up to you to um, give us an explanation of the thermal battery. It's, it's a PCM system, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, correct, correct. Um, I talked before about uh, the technology, what Sanam can do for, uh, for our customers. Um, when we talk about that, we focus mainly on the technology that we bring, and that's a PCM. The abbreviation of PCM stands for phase change material, and uh, this is what uh, Sanam can do for you. The solution is a patented name. Uh, it's named Plenty Great, and I will show you now a little bit um, what it what that is exactly. Why is that special? So what you're seeing here is on the left side you have the energy density which is at the moment less important, but the temperature on the x-axis, this one is really important. So we're comparing our systems always to hot water tanks as Thermino, that's the name of the product I'm presenting, I'm bringing to you today, um, is the is um, exchanging uh, or is the competition of traditional hot water tanks. So. As Reinhard men mentioned before, uh, if you're having a hot water tank, which you're heating up, a hot water tank with water will remain completely liquid, which means the water inside the tank will never change the phase. It will always remain liquid, and therefore it will move from an energy perspective. It will also always move linearly. Um, with the PCM, with our phase change material, uh, this changes, of course it's because we are using a material that changes the phase at 58 degrees. What does that mean? Everything below 58 degrees, so if the material is below 58 degrees, it will, it will be solid. If it, if it is above 58 degrees, it will get liquid. It's the same thing with water, just water does it at zero degrees. We have a material, we have developed a material that does that at 58. That's important because everything in between, the moment you start to liquefy or to solidify a material, you're entering into the latent part of the energy. And that's in English, it's called the hidden energy. Um, basically, we are maintaining the energy and increasing uh, the amount of energy that we can store, which means that if we can fix the temperature range between 45 here and 75 degrees, water will uh, store this amount of energy linearly while PCM will store all this energy in between plus all the sensible. This brings us um, several uh, advantages. One is the energy density. It's what you're seeing here, big, red, four times better energy density. This is important at the moment for this slide, just remain with, uh, with this thought. Um, as I mentioned before, Sonamp uh, focuses on technology. We notice, though, that uh, we need products. 
technology we're talking, the things we're, we've been talking until now is the product, like if I'm, if I'm having it in, our hand, in my hands, but this is not useful for a market. It needs a specific to a customer. So that was the second step. And here we're really entering into what Sunamp brings to the market and we're meeting uh, customer needs. Let me present you why four times better energy density is important for you. So you have on the left here, you have a traditional hot water tank, like we can find them everywhere. And on the right side, we have Thermino. Inside Thermino, there is this PCM that changes the phase at 58 degrees. And both products that you're seeing here can store the same amount of energy. This is important because of, um, uh, of the space saving, as you can see, is the most uh, visual topic. And then we have other features that, uh, that we are proud of. One of them is much lower heat losses. You will see them later. Uh, it's much easier to install. So you can see it even here in this picture. You can see on the left side with the hot water tank how many uh, pipes you need, how many pro additional products you need here on the side, here on the side. And on the right side, you see Thermino, how quickly you can install it. Just four pipes. There are also an expansion vessel and the thermal mixing valve, but that's in comparison rather quickly. From our point of view and our measurements, install Thermino needs half of the time compared to a hot water tank. Also, it's maintenance free, which means uh, as we don't have any hot water um, in our uh, system, so the hot water only uh, runs through our pipes, so enters the heat battery, but is not mixed up and it's not, uh, it, it, it isn't stagnated somewhere. Um, there, is no main, the, there is no maintenance uh, that needs to be done. And of course, no Legionella problems, no Legionella um yeah no legionella problems with that um let me enter a little bit on what thermino really is so from this picture uh you can see the blue part here that's in the middle the blue part is uh, the pcm so this is the material that we are really changing the phase from solid to liquid all the time um, we have these heat exchangers in the middle so you see four pipes that come in and here you see four, one, well, you see three, two, two and a half, and the last one is here behind. But this is how it flows. So cold water comes in, very simple. Cold water comes in from the mains. It gets heat up thanks to the PCM that's hot and then comes out as hot water, sanitary hot water, able and ready to use. Um, we have here the black box here. Those are our controls. This will be a topic also that uh, we had our cooperation with, with Reinhardt and, and Talal to make things compatible. So we have some controls so that uh, Thermino runs smoothly and perfect for the application of every customer. We have here, you cannot see it actually, but there is a, an electrical resistance at the bottom of 2.8 kilowatts. And then uh, here on the side, uh, you can barely see it. That's also the idea. It's very small, but those are vacuumized uh, insulation panels, which offer us this, uh, this advantage of much lower heat losses, which indirectly increases efficiency. If I go now into a much more direct uh, way of explaining things, you have here on the left, you have here uh, all the advantages that Thermino can offer compared to a hot water tank. And then on the right, you see just the bigger picture of what I already showed you. So going through the advantages three to four times smaller, that's the higher energy density as mentioned, as mentioned can be installed uh, with, a, with a heat pump, can be supported by solar PV thanks to devices and to the device of, uh, of my PV, the actor. Two to four times lower heat losses, as mentioned, A-rated thanks to the higher energy uh, efficiency, high flow rate compared to hot water tanks, we can make them the competition even with heat exchangers. Modular and cubioid, you can just put them in parallel in, um, in series. You will get more uh, storage or more power, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, compared to high quality uh, hot water tanks, so the price, 
faster and easier to install, as mentioned, and Thermino will remain uh, about 20 years, which compared to hot water tanks is um, not that long. Uh, no, it's longer, excuse me, uh, which makes it much easier for Thermino to be um, easier to pay over a longer period of time. So with Thermino, you will pay a little bit more at the beginning, but over time you will be paying less every month, which makes it at the end of the lifetime of a product much better for uh, for uh, your bank account. Entering to that, um, I'm presenting to you the specific Therminos that we have. So um, cost-effective modular, I mentioned it already. The important part of this slide that you can uh, think of is, of course, the four sizes that you see. So you see the Thermino 70, Thermino 150, Thermino 210, and Thermino 300. And those are the equivalent uh, sizes to hot water tanks, which means that in case you're installing uh, a hot water tank at home uh, of 210 liters, 200 liters, you will be looking at the Thermino 210 and the customer will, know, will not notice any difference, except for all the advantages mentioned with uh, space saving, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we have two big families. One family is based on electricity, which is only charged by electricity rather from the PV or only from ready grid. Um, and we have the other big family, which is thermally charged, where either a heat pump or another system that you are having already installed can charge directly Thermino and then the electrical resistance is either supported by PV or directly uh, with the grid as the backup. With that, um, we have done a lot of things, as mentioned. Um, Sonamp exists already since 2005, and we've done a lot, a lot of work. I'm bringing to you two different examples. One example, one project that we did is actually the largest residential heat storage project in Europe, and it's uh, in Edinburgh. So this was 625 homes across Scotland. The goal was not to get rid of gas totally, but to reduce it, to reduce the consumption of gas massively. So what we did and the solution proposed and installed was the gas boilers, they remain here, but we install PV on the roof, we have Thermino installed. Thermino is only charged by PV, so independently of how much energy there was in the day, how much was being used, etc., doesn't matter. Thermino is only charged by the solar panels, and then we pre-connect, we preheat the sanitary hot water before the boiler, which means cold water from just uh, from a consumption perspective. Cold water enters first Thermino, gets heated up as much as it can, gets out with the temperature that it got, enters automatically the gas boiler, and when it enters the gas boiler, the gas boiler measures the temperature, analyzes if it is enough for the customer on the other, on the other end. If it's enough, it passes through without burning anything. If it needs to be um, with a higher temperature, it burns gas to compensate um, this, uh, this, lacking, uh, this lack of energy. And with that, we were able to do 625 homes across Scotland. Um, after that, I'm bringing you a second example. Now, there is a lot of text. I'm not going to let you read that all. This was the idea that you can read something after the, after the webinar. So what I will be doing is presenting you uh, a video which we have on our website. Uh, we, invest, we invested great time and money to doing that, so I hope you enjoy it. I'm Jim Wilson, I'm Chairman of Bonner Grows Community Football Club. A resistant hot water system was a, a typical combi, gas boiler, few years old, maintenance costs, service costs, always breaking down, very unreliable. It led us to get rid of that. So we chose the Sun Amp system because we needed a, a maintenance free system, something that was easy to manage and easy to use. The SFA DCMS fund 
allowed us to actually carry this work out and install the SunAmp units along with solar PV and battery backup charging. Choosing the system was very much done with the plumbing installer. We initially spoke about installing a hot water cylinder, which we personally thought would be inefficient in terms of heat loss, etc. Hence the reason why we chose the SunAmp. The application to the SFA, the DCMS fund, once we had got budget costs in place, was a very straightforward process. We were fortunate enough to receive 75% of that cost. The benefits of the solar and water system is with taking the, the gas boiler out, the club's saving about £1,500 a year just on that, and we don't have any repairs. Very easy managed, the timers are set, the heaters charge, and everybody gets hot water when they need them. We'll know in the next five to ten years exactly what we've saved, but initially if we take £1,500 a year for gas service costs, Yep. We are going to have to pay a bit for electricity, we don't appreciate that. However, uh, through time we've got 10 kilowatts of panels on that roof, so through the summer we wouldn't anticipate using any energy to eat hot water. We thoroughly recommend going down this route, very easy to use, ticks the environment box and the challenges for your staff are taken away. So, and uh, with that, I will be at the end of my presentation. Um, I guess, uh, Reinhardt, you have uh, some follow-up slides, so I will be giving it back to you. Is that right? Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, this was quite interesting, especially the video in the end. Um, wow, it's, it's amazing how much volume you can save uh, by using the, the energy density of a PCM material compared to water. Uh, that, that's really amazing, especially when you bring it into a, a conventional um, product. Um, because all of us, we, we know this, this uh, small uh, merchandising tricks for PCMs to heat the, the hands uh, in the winter time. And it's really interesting when you, when you show a commercial product, then that's really making quite sense. Um, yeah. Finally, it's about me to give you um, the, the source for more detailed information on my PV products. Um, yeah, of course, you find them anytime in the download section of our website. You also find the quick start guide uh, for SunEmp there, but it's also linked in the, in the slide uh, that we had previously seen. Okay, um, what else? Um, of course, YouTube becomes much more and more important also uh, for the MyPV marketing, not only for, for SunEmp, as we just have seen it now, uh, and we are uploading um, videos there regularly. For example, the record of this webinar today that we have right now, um, once you want to show it uh, later on, you need to, to uh, remind yourself of a detail or you want to recommend it to someone you know, uh, please go to our YouTube channel. Uh, we are uploading it there um, in the next days. Uh, and uh, it's quite a good chance and it would be great if you can recommend uh, this record of today to someone. Okay, our products, your benefits. Um, I think both of us, um, yeah, Robert and, and MyPV, we see that uh, using power to heat uh, is uh, quite the easiest and cheap, cheapest way to improve PV self-consumption, of course. Uh, it's also about the stationary electric battery. We, we need all of these solutions for the transition to renewable energies, but also power to heat is a, a, an amazing chance to, to get rid of uh, energy imports uh, from other countries. Um, and we have commercial products here on the market already available and well, well proved. Um, that is the message of our webinar today. All right. Uh, where to buy my PV solution? Um, we have a very well developed distribution network in the German speaking countries, Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. And in many other countries, the distribution activities are on the increase. So thanks to Talal and um, our new colleague, Alice, uh, there is much activity on this side. And if you do not have a distribution partner in your country, uh, according to our website, then just please call, contact Talal and we are going to find a solution for this. 
All right. Thank you very much for your attention, um, especially for your time, ladies and gentlemen. It was great for us that you were with us today. Um, I think we have some more minutes for questions uh, in the chat. Do not hesitate. Just write them into the chat. Um, yeah, Robert, um, you can also uh, reactivate your mic and camera again. Uh, and by the way, now I remember uh, the the time in Frankfurt again. Talal introduced uh, you and me with each other, and we were just uh, stand neighbors, right? Yeah, your mic is off. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct, correct. <laughs> we were uh, just one besides the other. Yeah. So, so we already partnered up uh, a long time before <laughs> exactly. the webinar today. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, I do not see any questions so far. Um, yeah, if there is no question, then I think we can say thank you to the audience, Robert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Thank you very much for everybody uh, being here and uh, listening to, to our partnership. And uh, thank you again, Reinhardt and Talal for the platform. And uh, let's see if we, if we partner up in other trade shows in the future. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you very much for, for the team play, Robert. So, um, thanks. yeah. So wherever you are, ladies and gentlemen, have a good time and uh, thanks a lot. Empowering the solar future.